Welcome everyone, this is James Carpenter with Country Living. I did a whole series of videos, probably about 32 of them, over a period of time as we restored this building. I just went through all 30 some videos and I made this last video a complete video where you just see how everything took place and the whole restoration took all summer but it's done now and it's uh, it's a very nice building it's a lot of people comment on it it's got a unique look to it now the uh, construction is all pressure treated lumber and we'll show you some of that later in the video this is some of the tongue groove and little pegs they used to put it together this is the attic we had just cleaned it out the um, as far as we can tell, the farm, the original farm, was from about 1820, at least that's the county courthouse's records. Uh, to me, that seems like a long time ago, but the um, garage was probably built around the same time that the house was. Uh, the house and that white pole barn you see there in the back, my dad and I built that. Uh, I was in the Army by the time my parents bought this property in 1973. And I did come home on leave and help my dad build that pole barn. And then I was shipped over to Germany and spent a few years over there. Uh, got out of the Army and started working on my own place at that point. Here we're putting up the uh, six by sixes for the add-on. And here we're getting ready to start jacking the building. These are 4 by 4s I bought at Home Depot. These are hurricane straps. And that's me putting the hurricane straps on. I work pretty fast, don't I? Uh, that's what it looks like when it's finished. If you notice that one screw missing, that's because there was a knot there and I couldn't get it to take. Probably could have drilled it, but I didn't think one screw was going to make or break the deal. Now there's four choices. Those notches you see in there. When my mother was still alive, she had me put a garage door opener on the old version of this building. And there just wasn't enough room for the garage door and I had to cut those openings to get the track to work. Uh, now that I'm older and stuff, I wish I would have never done that. But I did a repair. See the blocks I put in there? And then I followed up with uh, a couple pieces of hardwood on either side. that old concrete you know actually when we dug that concrete out which you'll see that here shortly there was a layer of some really old concrete almost looked kind of powdery and then there was concrete poured on top of that but the concrete had cracked pretty severely and it didn't meet my standards for the building so uh, you'll see here in a few minutes uh, we removed all the concrete, dug out the uh, soil underneath and backfilled it with gravel, what they call 57s. 
we used that dumpster to put most of the scrap in, but subsequently found out that we probably could have used another one. Uh, this tape measure is illustrating how high we had grazed it at that point, 16 inches. A little bit of rot on that board, but we took it out of there. There's the telephone poles that um, we put underneath the oak beams to support the, bu the building. They were rotting off at ground level. The building was actually leaning because it was falling into the ground and I knew if I didn't do something with it soon that it was just going to fall down and I didn't want to see that. I'm kind of a history buff. I like older stuff. We sold that concrete and I took the forks and I plucked it all out of there. We left a pad under the uh, supports that's holding the building up until we could get the building set back down on the poles and secured. Now this is all the concrete. I did use that for for filler. I, I actually took every single block, kind of put them together like a puzzle and I made an expansion on my uh, parking lot with those. So they went to good use. There's a video on that if you want to watch it. That's a good good show of the pads that we left just to support it until we got the building set, set back down. Right there you can see where the, the oak beam sets on top of the uh, telephone pole. And those telephone poles are new. I got a video on that too. I got really lucky and had about 20 brand new telephone poles give to me, which was pretty sweet. Now this is backfilling the area and we did tamp it it doesn't show it in the video but everything got tamped this is not actually backfilling at this point that's me removing the dirt so that we could backfill here's all the forms we got the gravel in there got everything tamped got the forms up I'm getting ready for a concrete pour The guy I use for concrete, um, he he does it commercially, big buildings like parking garages and Walmarts and that. Uh, he's really good at what he does. I've had him pour uh, three floors for me now and extremely satisfied with every single pour. You can put a level on his concrete just about anywhere in the building and the bubble will be right there in the center. He had a pretty good sized crew there too. Okay, that, that's where you're coming out of the garage. And what I had them do is a one inch drop. That's the reason that looked like a little bit of a taper there. And then that other spot, that rectangle there, that's uh, for the garage door so water can't get in the building. That's the electrical box. That was there originally. My dad put that in probably back in the early 70s. That's one corner of the building. You can see the 4x4 four four framing.
and the overhang. It originally had the overhang on there I put on there for my mom because her car wouldn't fit in. So I had to extend the building out about three or four feet. But it was uh, it was done well, don't get me wrong, but nothing like what I've done here. I came out 12 feet and put a decent roof over everything. That's a 6x6 six six and two 4x4s four and here in a few minutes you're going to see what I did to make sure those were tied in good. I actually ended up countersinking and drilling and putting these 8 or 9 inch lag bolts in there. You know, we've got a variety of people watching the video, but there's probably some carpenters out there, and they would tell you that everything you're, that I've done here was overkill. But I do have a nickname. All my friends call me Overkill Carp because everything I build is so structurally sound that it's unbelievable. So this building stood for well over 100 years, and Honestly, I think it's going to go at least another 300 before it even needs attention. The most I can see is down the road you might have to put a new metal roof on it. Now that, that's the stairs. We, we built the staircase. The original staircase was right there in that location. And for whatever reason, someone took it out and put stairs on the outside of the building. That's a micro lamb right there at the top at the very peak. And we angle cut it so it would uh, line up with the, uh, the rafters. And here I'm getting ready to put hurricane straps on uh, the rafters. Took some of them leftover 4x4 four four blocks, put a taper cut on them, and screwed those up there too. Just trying to make sure that that peak is, is firm and strong. And then of course the hurricane straps and obviously the building withstood all the uh, wind for over 100 years and held up without all that. This is just one invoice. Uh, I think it's $2,800. Uh, it's for the uh, pressure treated wood that went on the outside. Now this is unique. This is uh, a photo my parents had taken of the farm when they first bought the place. And the old barn was still there. Now the barn's gone in this newer picture. And the pole barn that my dad and I built is that white one in the back and that garage I'm pointing at is the one we're rebuilding right now. So there's quite a history on this place. That's three quarter inch plywood. Over there on the right, right there, we're putting a uh, 
wall up so nobody can fall down them stairs. That uh, microlamp beam at the top, that's all complete here. Now, somebody's probably going to ask why didn't I insulate it. I'll be honest with you, I've got two other garages that are fully insulated and heated. And one of them's actually got AC, mine, anyhow. I have no intentions of working out of this building in winter time. I've got three, three large Toro lawnmowers. A 72 inch deck on two of them and a 60 inch deck on the other one. I'm going to put the lawn equipment in there, all the rakes and shovels and picks and all that. It's just going to be a utility building. Of course I've had a few friends of mine uh, want to turn it into an apartment. Right here I'm explaining how I'm going to put a block in there and I'm going to put one of the big lag bolts into the 4x4. Four four. Those steps are are in there. They're not coming down. I wouldn't be afraid to walk up them even in 300 years. This is a delivery of the tongue and groove 2x6's pressure treated that's going to wrap the outside of the building. That was that act, that was that invoice for twenty eight hundred dollars by the way. I forget what I paid for the four by fours, but all in all there's quite a bit of money went into the project. But it sure did change the building. That's a nice little tow motor. I like the way it just whips around. And it looks to me like it can lift quite a bit of weight. Most of the framing's done at this point. That's uh, the start of the electrical. I had to get a few receptacles in there so we could have power especially for the garage doors you're about to see installed. That walkthrough door there, I got that for 50 bucks at Habitat. I didn't notice it when I bought it, but the reason it was so cheap is it does have a dent in it. Now this is where I did a countersink and then I drilled a hole and then I put these oh, about eight maybe nine inch lag bolts in there. That goes through the four by four into the six by six. Were they necessary? Probably not. Will they make the longevity of the building better? Obviously it will. Yeah, it looks like the wall shaking, but it's not. So that's what one looks like when it's done. I did, I did them all the way around the entire building. I 
that's what one looks like. Now that, uh, that's pallet lumber, skid lumber, and it's not used. It was cut wrong, so I got a really good deal on it. And uh, I'm using it on the interior. It's pretty decorative looking stuff. We use that um, Henry stuff. Uh, it's like a rubberized coating. We painted the roof with that. Here I'm showing you more of the uh, 4x4s that were lag bolted to the 6x6s. There's one, that, yeah, right there. It, it, that one went through on an angle, and just a little bit of it showed right there. Now I put those lag bolts through that 4x4 into the 4x4 stud, plus these are nailed and lag bolted on both sides. And then at the top of the staircase, there's uh, joist hangers. I don't think that staircase is going anywhere. That's a shelf I built. This is underneath the steps. Right here I'm explaining um, how I put those nailers on there and recessed all that wood in there to give it the look that it has and it allowed me to leave the 4x4s exposed so you can actually see the 4x4s between the uh, pallet lumber. I'll call that an inlay possibly. There's three nails in each board on each 4x4 post. They're galvanized nails shot with a gun. Alright, these are, they, they've done every garage door for me on the property, but they're out of a small town near here, and they, they do great work, and I contracted them to do the doors. Those two lights, uh, those, one came with each garage door, those are pretty nice. They're on a motion detector, so if you walk underneath them or near them, they, they turn on. Those big doors there with the, hinge, the three hinges on either side, I can open those up and use the forks on the tractor and set skids and stuff up there in that attic so that uh, you don't have to carry them up the steps.
I put the pegboard up and there's there's one shelf I'm gonna do shelves all the way around underneath the pegboard I've got them heavy-duty brackets supporting the shelf but I thought the pegboards would be nice I can put uh, I can hang my tools up and stuff my gardening tools that's a demonstration of the uh, nailer for the inlaid wood we're pointing at here That's a built-in shelf. That's how I, I did the inlay. Yeah, I'm too old to get up there and get that rope down. That, that roof is a lot steeper than it looks on camera, trust me. But you're pretty much looking at the finished product right now. So with that being said, the video is probably going to close here shortly. I always like to give my subscribers heads up when the video is about to end so you have time to hit that like button those were door knockers I got them from Habitat for two bucks a piece they're brass I didn't even take the knocker part of it all I wanted was the Eagles and I just screwed the Eagles where the knocker goes the two holes for the knocker I screwed the eagle to the uh, building all right well I want to thank you for watching my video uh, share the video like the video let's see if we can make it go viral can you help me out with that it's a before and an after